Welcome to the SCICA product webinar series. Thank you for joining us for Direct Digital Print and Accessories Upgrade. We are pleased to have Bill Schreiber, the Technical Sales and Educational Manager for Artistic Finishes. Bill is the Technical Sales and Artistic, <clears throat> excuse me, Bill is the Technical Sales and, Ar and Education Manager for Artistic Finishes, formerly known as Moldings Online. He began his career in the lumber industry and built a strong sales record in wood flooring distribution for over 15 years before, before joining Artistic Finishes in 2009. His experience and in-depth knowledge is used to assist Artistic Finishes customers with all their questions relating to the flooring industry. Look for Bill on all of the technical data material, as well as trade magazine articles and association webinars. Welcome, Bill. We are excited to have you. I'm going to turn the controls over to you. Good morning. I am uh, I'm very pleased to be able to be uh, talking today uh, with a, a group of individuals that are hopefully excited to learn and uh, open to new technologies. Uh, artistic finishes uh, now uh, I would say probably close to three years ago, uh, began this endeavor, uh, which we uh, really owe to our, our owner, uh, Denny Leach, the uh, interest in a better product. We're always trying to upgrade the quality of the products that we produce. And it was probably about uh, five Oh, now six years ago that we initiated our WPC profiles and uh, the profiles themselves started with as few as just five in a, uh, a very small range of thicknesses that at that time we're looking at um, initially, you know, focusing on the uh, what was termed the waterproof vinyls, uh, the WPCs of the world. And uh, of course, the rest is history. Uh, the number of products, the number of sizes, uh, patterns, colors, what have you, has never ceased to stop growing. And with that, uh, we decided that from our wood veneer finish, where we have more of just a coordinated and or uh, complementary look, we want it to be able to be closer to the actual look of the floors. And searching deeply, we came up with uh, uh, a company that we felt we could work with, uh, with our digital printing capacity in uh, uh, the challenges uh, have been mastered to the point now where we feel we've got uh, and have been producing product for that. But before we get to that, um, I would like to digress just a little bit about, uh, you know, the history of digital print, uh, the areas of use, uh, you know, the, the printing industry is, uh, it's an over 800 billion dollar industry in size and it's thriving and you know people think well newspapers books uh, I've got an iPad what what do I need print for uh, but we, we fail to realize that uh, packaging for example is over a 300 billion dollar industry in and of itself and that certainly is not going away in fact it's growing leaps and bounds uh, the digital print area is only going to continue to grow, and we being, I believe, the first to take it to the accessory side of our industry and the flooring industry, uh, we'll kind of explore, you know, what really does it, how has it come to be, the, the knowing your colors and how light affects it, and, uh, and then to show you some of the applications that we have uh, have created, certainly 
we'll get to that in some of the uh, additional questions that may come from this. Now, a little bit of reading in the beginning, uh, you know, digital printing and other printing technologies uh, have really come from uh, its early beginnings. Uh, a fellow by the name of name Graham Nash from, I'm sure many of you remember and still maybe even enjoy Crosby's Nash, Young and Stills. Uh, Graham had an idea that he could take uh, his uh, photography and by manipulating his Macintosh computer uh, could create photos and pictures that were never seen before in such bright color and individual uh, detail. Uh, he did this and uh, he made a $126,000 investment into a digital photography uh, piece of equipment which uh, he later fully recouped with his amazement, uh, you know, at art exhibits and displays of his critically acclaimed photos, which, of course, we know uh, music artists have the ability to, to travel uh, around the world. Uh, that was a form of the beginning, just back in the 80s. Uh, Digital printing is a method of printing from a digitally based image directly to a variety of media. Uh, we will discuss the media. It usually refers to professional printing where you have small jobs for, you know, individual rather than large paper rolls or product rolls. Uh, this, you know, is a, is a very unique form of printing that uh, allows you to do more than just the large high volume uh, projects, but certainly that is capable. Uh, the, the, the digital printing has a higher cost per page or per product than more traditional offset printings, but the price is usually offset by avoiding all the costs or many of the costs involved with the technical setups, you know, feeding of product and such. Uh, which is required through printing plates. And it allows for uh, also uh, on-demand, available, and short-time turnaround times because you can print immediately and have the product available directly from the individual printers. The digital printing technology history developed over time to get us where we are today. Uh, the publishing tool, the desktop, uh, laptops, fine art devices, industrial press uh, proof printing were used to create what we need. The process of the evolution came as follows. First, the requirement of one-off reproduction and short runs by hands, and then low-quality mimeographs and stenciling, and last, inline printing, magnetic tape, digital, or punch card storage of the texts were used. A fellow that really took the industry to where it is today, uh, Benny Landa, an entrepreneur uh, of original Polish descent. His parents actually fled during uh, World War II to Canada. Uh, before he moved uh, from Canada down to the United States. Uh, his uh, ePrint 1000 Digital Press, which was a 25-year project, uh, creating the ability to, uh, you know, do variable data prints and short runs, has really uh, evolutionized the industry. And uh, it doesn't take much time for it to merge as the top choice for this purpose. His company, uh, which he sold for well over 200 million uh, a number of years ago, uh, is now basically a division within Hewlett Packard. And uh, Benny is still with us. I would encourage you to uh, listen to the, the man. He's, he's quite a, in, uh, a bit of a genius in, uh, and as a scientist in, 
now working heavily into nanotechnology in his later years. Uh, some of the major differences uh, with, uh, you know, digital printing, uh, its predecessors, lithiograph printing, this process was based on the fact that grease and water don't mix. Uh, the image was applied to a grain surface, typically like stone or aluminum, many times on a wheel, and uh, uh, such a, a special greasy ink, uh, they called it a touche, or like a crayon, pencils, lacquer, uh, synthetic materials, all were things that, uh, and or still to some degree in certain industries, are used in, in lithograph printing. Uh, gravure printing is used, uh, widely used in, in the processing method, uh, used to print large volumes of magazines and catalogs, uh, still used today. Letterpress printing is a process of relief print text and uh, image used to a high bed, uh, high type uh, surface press and it's removable. Uh, those uh, were used way back in the early days of uh, newspaper print. Uh, flexograph is a roll feed web printing process uh, for high volumes. It's, it's also uh, uh, newer, if you can say the 50s and 60s is newer uh, for high volumes of print. Digital print, its history, history direct to garment was uh, the initial big industry that took uh, direct digital printing into the United States. As recent as 1996, the introduction of the first commercially available uh, direct to garment printers uh, named the Revolution was developed by DIS of Brandon, Brandon Florida and based on an invention by Matthew Rahm, and Rahm had been working on that project for some years and applied for the uh, patent in July of 1996. And you'll find in the printing world, just about everything is patent. A lot of patents, a lot of money goes with those. So, pure definition, it's a method of printing an image directly transferred from a printer onto a film making this process highly flexible, environmentally friendly, and offering high quality printing. Uh, when saying a printing image, uh, we refer to vinyl, PVCs, papers, and in 2018, we began researching uh, and, uh, and developing our DDP printing process on curved profiles. Use of the isosport, uh, low process time, the high flexibility, and thus high suitably for very small numbers of batches, an individual stick or piece, for example, a profile, a stair nose, uh, soon to be discussed will be treads and risers. Uh, thus, uh, no storage required, low purchase costs for the necessary equipment, very high image resolution. Uh, we're looking at uh, close to 600 uh, PSIs and uh, number of, of, of parts in a square inch and uh, uh, decibels per square inch, excuse me. Uh, very low cost uh, thanks to low inking. And uh, the inks that we use, uh, of course, uh, you know, they have to be UV uh, cured, and so um, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that as, further down the road. When we talk about printing and anything in, in, in terms of uh, our products with the uh, direct digital print, we have to know our colors. Uh, CMYK model, it is uh, commonly used, uh, it works uh, by partially or entirely masking colors on a lighter, in our case, totally white background. Uh, the ink, it reduces uh, uh, the light 
that would otherwise be reflected. We'll explain all that here, try to get a better understanding of color and how we perceive it. Uh, such a model is called a subtractive uh, method uh, because we subtract the colors red, green, and blue from white light. The white light minus red leaves cyan. White light minus green leaves magenta. And white light minus blue leaves yellow. We'll take a closer look at all of that. The processes we have for the four colors in common known, uh, cyan is the C, M the magenta, Y the yellow, and B for black. The DPI, the dots per square inch, uh, as I mentioned, up to 600 DPSI, currently printed uh, for our specifications, and we'll take a closer look at each individual color, uh, cyan, greenish blue, it's evolved, evolved in, by a, a light with a predominant wavelength of between 409 to 520 nano minute, nano minute between the wavelengths of green and blue in the subtractive color system. There's, there's added color systems, okay? Uh, in the added color systems, you have uh, what's used to create all the colors on a computer or television display. Cyan is made by mixing equal amounts of green and blue. Cyan is a complement of red. It can be made by the removal of red from a white light, which we use the subtractive color system. Other medias use the added or additive color system. Here you can see the difference where you have the additive versus subtractive on an RGB color wheel. The magenta is the color between rose and violet, and halfway between red and blue. And the color magenta is X11 and fuchsia in an HTML. Uh, the RGB color model, it is created by combining equal intensities of red and blue light. So what it's showing here is basically your primary colors that are used in a subtractive method for direct digital print. Those four colors can create endless variety and shade of different colors. In our world, we deal with a lot of gray. Of course, you know, with, with the popularity of the grays, we joke about 50 grades of shea, I think we're dealing with over 400 grades of shea. Yellow is a subtractive, in the yellow uh, portion there, you can see the colors that yellow affects, the, you know, they're all interrelated. Black in a subtractive system is a combination of all the primary remaining colors. Now, one of the things that come into play with our eye's ability uh, to perceive color is the light. Light is a measurement that is measured in kelvins. Uh, for example, a daylight is typically around 5,000 kelvin, a very bright day. Cool white ranges between 3,100 to 4,500, and warm light is generally in the 2,000 Kelvin to 3,000 Kelvin range. That would be in your home, residential, some office uh, settings. Depending on where you are and the type and or quality of light, the DDP will look slightly different, okay? Our product will gear to work best with white warm light. We have found that residential Lighting is predominantly in the white, warm light. And of course, natural light does come into play as well. 
and other light sources will be used uh, with minimal color change, as we we will uh, kind of see here. So your high range, you know, uh, in the 4100, uh, you know, can appear cool. The light rays are the only visible rays to the naked eye. So as you see the the, the cylinder, the, the 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 roof close in on that ultraviolet to infrared range, this is where we draw our color from because that's what the eye can see. And as you change the light, it will affect the colors that you do see. Obviously, and you know, without light at night, uh, black becomes increasingly more common. Darkness. Uh, certain colors will fade from your visual uh, ability to see color. As the light goes down at the end of the day, uh, you begin to see things in black and white or shades of gray. And as it becomes brighter throughout the day, you begin to see more and more color. This is basically saying that the amount of energy in the light will affect the colors that are visible to the naked eye. When this happens and you change the light, a phenomenon called metamerism occurs. And it basically is two colors appear to match under one lighting condition, but not when the light will change. Well, what, what are we talking about? Metamerism, matching, uh, you know, the, these are quite common, especially in near neutral colors like grays, whites, and dark colors. Metamerism is a perceived matching of colors with different non-matching spectral power distributions. Now, don't be uh, misled by a power distribution. Uh, you know, a spectral power distribution was what I showed uh, a couple of uh, back here. This would be a, a full spectrum of power distribution of color. The colors that match this way are called metamers. A special power distribution describes the proportion of the total light given off, emitted, transmitted, or reflected by a color sample at each visible wavelength. Because that is determined in part by the light, large, largely by the light given off. It defines the complete information of the light coming from the sample. Here's a good example. On the left, you have bright, light, cool, white. And on the right, you have a soft, warm light. Both balls appear to be orange on the left, but the soft white changes the look of the balls, making them darker. Plus, the uh, box that was used here, uh, being a um, ultraviolet uh, seeking material on the walls, illuminates the walls to uh, appear to have an orange pastel. This different light source creates different results. And this is uh, all in consistency with what we refer to as metamerism. Uh, I think the one uh, uh, section here that shows uh, clearly, uh, you know, as you have a north sky daylight, you see generally almost all of the colors fairly consistently. If you have a tungsten bulb, uh, you're going to see more of the yellows and the reds and the oranges than you will the blues. If you have a fluorescent light, uh, you, the blues and the greens are the predominant colors that will be seen. It diminishes your ability to see the red in, in, a, in a product, uh, you know, a surface color. Okay? So things look different under different illuminants. 
or light sources. The human eye basically has three color receptors. That's it. Which means that all colors are reduced to three sensory qualities. And these three are cumulatively called tristimulus values. The tristimulus values uh, work with why metamerism occurs because each type of cone responds to the cumulative energy from a broad range of wavelengths. And so that these different combinations of light across all the wavelengths, which your eye creates through the tristimulus value, can produce an equivalent re receptor response. And the same tristimulus values or color sensations. In color science, the set of sensory spectral sens sensitivity curves as a numerically representative by color matching functions. Simply spoken, your eyes perceive color based on the amount of light and the type of light that they are being exposed to or is present in the room, for example, that you're in. As mentioned earlier, the common ranges of light, 1,000 to 3,500, would appear warm. Mid-range, 3,500 to 4,100, kind of balanced. Where do we see that? Cloudy days. Uh, a lot of your uh, soft, warm lights, okay? And when you get above 4,100, you're going to be seeing uh, bright white lights, uh, fluorescent lights, uh, mercury vapor lights, lights that uh, are going to limit the amount of color that's going to be seen in a room or the type of color that's going to be seen in the room because it affects the visibility of your full light spectrum, the rainbow, which you have available through your three color receptors. In the industry, the flooring industry, Forbo, some of you may be buying it, some of you may have installed it, some of you may be aware of them. They're using an example here with large format direct digital print where they can design floors on large pattern. Uh, you know, here's the moons and the, and the, uh, the planets in a, in a floor, in a commercial setting. So the sky is the limit. There, is, there really is no limit to what can be done with creativity and funky design. Uh, if a picture can be taken, we can take those pictures and we can interpret that onto a media, say vinyl, film, wrap, uh, which can be textured and create a city map. The perfect finish is what we've always been after. We feel we're getting very, very close. Our EnduraCore digital print technology is now a part of Artistic Finishes WPC profiles. And although the DDP has been printed on metals in the past and fabrics, the garment industry, I noted, one of the first to really exploit it. And, of course, glass. Never has it been created on vinyl wrap flooring moldings. Flooring, yes, but not curved surfaces until now. Stair nosing, T-molds, reducers, square nosing, wall base, quarter round, and soon, treads and risers. In this picture, you can see down in the bottom corner the, uh, the location of the uh, profile, which came from a white profile located over here, down with the floor next to it, that really you can't tell which is which. That's our goal, to be able to aesthetically have the best looking product, water resistant, UV protected, highly effective 
and cost effective in the flooring industry. With that, we showed some of the profiles that uh, are now being made in direct digital print. Uh, our patented line of EnduraCore profiles now include the minis, the, the two and a half to five and a half millimeter, showing designs in square edged of different radiuses in the stair nosing, in flush profiles, as well as full radius round, quarter round, adjustable stair nosings, which can be creating a flush stair nose for stick treads, for example, wall base, T molds, square nosing, some refer to it as end cap, uh, overlapping stair nose, and of course, reducers, also primarily overlapping. This was our initial uh, segment of profiles for flooring thickness in the six to 10, created a little over two years ago. Uh, we've, we started with the, uh, the uh, square nose, the stair nose, the T molds, uh, reducer overlapping. We've added the flush in the 288 profile and of course the adjustable uh, again. Now when we get into this, you will start to begin to see track uh, being used where the, the uh, receiver portion is an option. We don't require it, nor is it required. It's not usable in a flush, in either of the flush stair noses. It's, it's not an option. EnduraCore profiles in the 10 to 15 have grown as the, uh, the resurgence, if you will, of the uh, laminate industry, uh, you know, being competitive with the uh, the, the multi layers uh, of uh, vinyl, the SPCs, the rigid vinyl cores, the WPCs, what have you, the LVTs, the the the, uh, the, the vinyls themselves are, are so strong that uh, the laminate industry has started to introduce you know, uh, acrylic impregnations and different composite material that also is waterproof. And with that, the half inch or 12.7 millimeter thicknesses have grown, whereby these uh, can accommodate that thickness range as well in the, in the waterproof uh, laminate category. Here's an example of an acacia, uh, this being the T-mold, here is the floor, uh, this being an LVP, uh, I believe, uh, not for sure which manufacturer that is, but you can see there how close it becomes once we uh, start to uh, initiate our uh, direct digital print processing. Currently, we are making a product for select customers and that is growing on a weekly basis. And so um, if you have a business or a line uh, of product that uh, you have interest in, we'd be more than happy to entertain the opportunity to uh, discuss getting your products involved. The profiles, uh, we continue to add uh, 273 was shown earlier, it's a mini in the two and a half, actually up to six millimeter uh, thick range. Uh, the 283 and 294 cover the other thickness thicknesses in this range, uh, but uh, this is a great uh, overlapping stair nose for the very, very small floors that are available now in the multi-layer flooring segment. Uh, 340 uh, is now going to be used uh, here you will see it uh, by, uh, we're, we're saying the second quarter, if not sooner, to select uh, pilot uh, customers in the industry with a profile 490, uh, which is shown here below, uh, as a part of a tread and riser format, and uh, that will be discussed uh, more into the future. But we're excited, it is a project that we have been researching and developing for close to two years. 
always keep in mind that uh, with today's profiles, uh, the uh, introduction of uh, the modified silanes has really uh, created uh, a golden opportunity for products that you do not want to affect the finish uh, with nails or staples, use of, use of guns. Uh, this is all eliminated uh, when you start to look at the opportunity with the advancement of adhesives, uh, modified silenes. Uh, they have a very high green grab. They will bond to steel, metal, concrete, whether it's been cured or not, any of the wood composites, uh, drywalls, gypsums, what have you. And uh, they, they certainly have advanced uh, and, and changed the industry, uh, creating new methods of installation for our installers to seriously, uh, you know, increase their quality as well as increase their, their uh, or decrease their time involved with the installation of these uh, accessories. With that, I do want to just, uh, you know, talk briefly about it, uh, recognizing that this direct digital printing is only 24 years in the man's history. Uh, the, the today technologies are advancing at uh, unbelievable speeds. Uh, you know, the polymer electronics industries, the, uh, these technologies are going to provide lasting changes. Uh, nanotechnology, uh, you know, some of the, some of the changes that are happening as we speak are phenomenal and will only continue to get better. Uh, you know, digital print, it remains a mechanical process. Ink, right, uh, is used as a base for printing, but with a computer. And, uh, you know, it, it, it only uh, goes to show you that the combination of one technology uh, creates the advancement of several other technologies. And in this case, printing has certainly been a beneficiary. Now used in the flooring industry by us, uh, you know, artistic finishes will continue to develop and add. Uh, less than two years ago, one printer. Now working with five printers, uh, I, I can't tell you uh, where we'll be in another two years. But the, ex the future is exciting. Uh, we're, we're going to continue to use what we refer to as the CMYB subtractive process uh, with the white background. Uh, it gives us the most flexibility and uh, the best results. Uh, it has the, the, the widest uh, tolerances for the different lighting as we get from commercial, uh, or excuse me, from residential to commercial application. Uh, there can be uh, adaptations with the different lights for the different industries and settings, uh, you know, uh, assuming that it, it can be done on a, uh, a big enough scale where we see that it can be uh, profitable for both parties. We're really wanting, you know, our goal is to satisfy uh, the end user and so that the experience, uh, it, it becomes uh, flawless, if you will. In, in terms of uh, aesthetics, uh, function, usability, longevity. Uh, and from that standpoint, uh, we're excited. And we hope that uh, our end users are the real beneficiaries of, of the technologies, that we have the, the joy of, of presenting and trying to create uh, for many, many years to come uh, because if you're like most of us, uh, once you get in the flooring industry, it's hard to get out and it's going to be exciting to see uh, what's, what the future has to offer. With that, I will entertain any questions uh, that might uh, come about and uh, I'll uh, take the screen back to uh, questions. 
Thank you so much, Bill. Um, if the audience has any questions or comments, please submit them now in the question box on the left of your screen. We'll wait a moment or two for people to enter in their questions. Christine, would you like me to do a seed question? I, you know what? I'll I'll read that out now. So, okay. Um, All right. Yep. Uh, we've got the question here, and that is, what type of ink or toner does artistic finishes use for their digital printers? Well, that's uh, that's a very good question. Uh, there is no longer toner being used. Uh, no, no toner powders. Uh, you know, when you think of a toner, you you, you go to your printer, uh, you know, your copy machine, for example, and you think of a toner. Uh, in in direct uh, digital print, there is no toners. Uh, we're using ink. Uh, that ink is uh, it's a UV inks, so that once the uh, the uh, ink is applied to the media. In this case, vinyl uh, wrap, okay, PVC wrap primarily, um, it is immediately cured at the time of application. About 98%. Uh, over the next 24 hours, the remaining 2% of that ink will be cured. So it, the answer to that question is UV inks. Does that help you? <laughs> okay. Uh, next question: What type of finish is used for the final top coat? Artistic finishes is always uh, developing and advancing its finishes. Uh, we have uh, used uh, proprietary finishes. Uh, we do get a lot of people asking us what our finishes are made up of. Um, we've used everything from, you know, the, 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 the terms aluminum oxide to uh, acrylics. Uh, we, we, we can have a proprietary uh, finish that uh, uses uh, different degrees of, of oxides, and uh, they're basically uh, polyurethane, UV curing polyurethanes uh, by base, and uh, we, we focus on uh, lower v, U, excuse me, VOC, uh, the volatile organic compounds, to be able to uh, stay current with the rest of the industry. Uh, we look to maximize our Tabor test uh, results through, through abrasion, uh, utilization of the, uh, well, ASTM's uh, D4060 is uh, our source for our test that we use, uh, and uh, we, we, we're confident that uh, we will only get better and only get more durable, but uh, uh, UV cured polyurethanes uh, to a proprietary blend is basically the answer to that. Okay, next question is, is are any are there any new colors being added to your bank of products? Well, that is a daily uh, occurrence. Uh, we actually have uh, people now that that's all they are doing is uh, downloading colors into our computers, our, our, our data banks. And then, of course, we have to be able to create that onto a media, uh, a, a, a film paper, that we can use to establish a, a library book, if you will. Uh, that is being done uh, not fast enough, by my estimation, uh, but we have gotten uh, about 200 times faster than we were a year ago. Just to show you that this is really, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the future. Uh, because we know that the list is long already. We have a number of customers that are uh, already on our list for our direct digitally printed profiles, and uh, the waiting list is getting longer, but we are at the same token uh, 
you know, taking care of customers uh, that uh, we just got on our list as little as, you know, two to five months ago, where a year ago I would say, you know, you're going to be waiting for us to be able to produce these colors for your floors, uh, you know, maybe in a year. Uh, well, now we're talking months and maybe even a month. So we're getting faster, Christine, but it is, it is a, a, an ongoing working process that we are aware the demand is far greater than our capabilities are today, but we're getting faster. And so uh, the patience is paying off for those that are, are lining up and uh, we're grateful. Uh, you know, we, we want to be able to help everybody immediately with this process, but do keep in mind that our profiles are still readily available uh, through our wood veneers. And uh, for, you know, 90% of our customers that are experiencing those profiles with great satisfaction, they just don't have the capability to be able to be you know, what we would refer to as more of our custom blend, uh, you know, a spot on uh, image of the floor uh, as our digital direct print does. I hope that helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, so audience members, if there are no other questions, Bill, we haven't received any other questions. So um, on behalf, of FCICA. Thank you, Bill, for presenting today's webinar. And well, I uh, thank Sims, you. <laughs> um, Sims, you may now navigate to the Submit Credit tab to receive credit. Please note that you must be signed into the education platform for this feature to work. If you have any issues, please let us know. So again, thank you so much, Bill. And uh, this is the conclusion of the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Thank you as well. Thanks to all of you for attending.